So Pat, we're going to do a market commentary for our viewers. Um, we're now in the first week of, say, September. Um, and I suppose people will always be curious, uh, we're into the selling season now, uh, where things are at price-wise. Um, maybe starting with calves, where, where are prices for calves at the moment? Yeah, so I suppose the range within the calves were depending on the paperwork, like, like all groups. Um, typically calves between five, 550 to 700 euros. Um, we sold a group at 700 last week and then the week previous we had a group at 550. So just depending on the age of the calves um, and the paperwork there. Uh, moving on then, I suppose your autumn bulling heifers, we have some groups of those available. Um, probably around a thousand, maybe slightly below it, but, but in around a thousand euro mark. Um, they're a niche thing, there, there's not many groups of those available when they come available. They're generally sold quite quickly, to be fair. Okay. Um, then I suppose the springing calf heifer trade, which is really heating up now. Um, every year we're seeing a difference in the price range between quality, um, be that the animals, and uh, the paperwork associated with them and the, the herd that they're coming from. But you're looking at anywhere between 13 to 1700. There's a massive price range there between them. Um, really the groups that are, we'll say, in calf to sex, seam and high EBI, they are getting, they are getting, we'll say, that they're, they're achieving that higher price. And it, uh, Pat, um, anything to do with crossbreds or black and whites? Is there much of a difference price-wise or are they similar within their own ranges? Similar within their own range, yeah. Um, it is a question we're often asked, but no, like there's, um, I sold a group, uh, there was 20 heifers in a birthday, 1650 they went for. They were a crossbred group of heifers, really strong, well done animals. Um, again, a lot of them, were in calf to six semen and they were cleaned up with an Angus there again. So um, the farmer buying, I suppose, was very happy to, to go with that then as well. Right. Um, so th there's, again, we're just seeing the price difference there between them. Um, spring calving cows, what we're getting on the market there now at the moment is some later calving cows. I suppose guys are look, maybe just looking to pull back numbers a small bit. They're after doing their scanning and they're looking at anything calving, we'll say from mid-March to this first week of April that they'll sell those. So look, I suppose, it's a double-edged sword. It's a, it's a good way to tidy up there for, for the seller and for the buyer. You're getting cows that are going still producing milk and can be milked on um, through until the new year and um, back in calf again, you know. So with the high milk price, they're a valued animal to be buying still. Okay, and much in the herd sale market yet? Is there many coming through yet? Yeah, we have we've have had some inquiries of, um, I suppose, from both parties, but we haven't we haven't really done many sales on the herds yet. Again, the scanning maybe has to happen and um, a few things have to be, be lined up before people will say, yeah, no. I'm ready to go with the herds. High milk price as well, I suppose, is keeping people milking on. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah very definitely good. Helping on it. Um, maybe on the autumn calving market then, autumn calvers. Yeah, so we still have a good few groups of autumns available. Um, even freshly calved ones there now um, are coming out and going, looking at a group of those there now tomorrow morning. Um, look, you're talking anywhere between 16 to 1800 there, depending on the, the type of animal and the age as well. But we have a lot of good young cows there available on that. Right. Then you're probably slightly backed in maybe for your November, December calver um, uh, as well. There, but there's a few groups of those available as well. They're probably ranging between maybe 1550 to 1650 for those. Okay. Um, the drought, what, what, what effect has the drought had on the market in the last, say, three to six weeks, or would you think? I suppose just created a bit of indecision, Bertie, there. People were just um, waiting to see what was going to happen a small bit. Um, but look, we are after getting the rain there now over, over the weekend, so um, the phones have been busy there talking to all the other agents. The phones have been busy. Buyers are looking at it. Look, you go and look at a group of animals today, you're not going to them in the yard tomorrow. So when the flush of grass, ar grass arrives, that they're ready to take advantage of it then and have the animals there on farm. You know? Right. Okay, I suppose the, your, the website is where all our groups are, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you have a, a, a wide cross section of animals. With exactly, yeah. So, yeah, we, we try and get every group up on the website. Some groups actually will be sold before they get to the website if a farmer makes contact with us with a specific requirement. And if we get those animals, we, we'll have them sold before they'll actually get to the website. Um, but, yeah, we, we try and get most groups would be, would be put up on our website, yeah. Very good. And I suppose, look, before we move on to get a market update from um, Manchu Beeson, who works as our livestock manager in the UK, uh, yesterday we did a short clip with John O'Gorman, he's a scanner down in that uh, West Waterford, East Cork area, so we'll just include a, a short snippet from John and what he's finding with the scanning, and then we'll move on to a quick update from Matthew on the UK side of things. Okay? Perfect. Perfect. So um, we're just going to do an update on scanning, so we have John O'Gorman with us here today. So John, you're, you're from Lismore in Waterford? That's right, yeah. And you cover, say, the, the Waterford and East Cork area there? I'm, I'm living in Lismore and I'm covering West Waterford, East Cork. And yeah, so it's a big dairy area. Yeah, so I suppose look for our viewers. I suppose we have, you know, scanning is obviously a big topic at the minute. A lot of people are yeah. at it. Yeah. What kind of results are you finding out there? Very good so far. I suppose, look, it's early days yet, but I have a lot of cows scanned in the last three weeks um, up until then. 
I suppose it was really, it was too hot. There was guys ringing me, but look, I was putting it down the road a bit because um, it was just physically both on men and beast just to, you know, so, um, just, but it's all right. I suppose I'm going fairly hard at it with the last three weeks. Um, results very good this year, ranging kind of anything from three, four percent empty rates. And I'd say the worst rates I've gotten so far are about 12 percent and like, which is still a very acceptable rate, you know, um, uh, heifers, I've done a few big herds, you know, it's just even a few herds, three, 400 cow herds where they'd have maybe 80 to 100 heifers come in and a couple of cases there, all the heifers in calf. Right. And um, now again, like then, and you know, all heifers really very good this year, you know, five, 6% empty rates, you know. And what are you putting that down to, do you think, to those good results, sir? Uh, I suppose feeding, everybody seems to be feeding better. I know price of feed has gone up this year, but, um, Look, um, it's been a good year on grass uh, during the breeding season. I know like there's grass deficits everywhere now with drought and everything, but um, feeding, um, yeah, breeding as well. Everyone's, look, everyone's getting better at it, I suppose, you know. Right. How year, would this, years of com- practice. How would have this compare, say, then to last year, your results that you're finding? Yeah, well, like, on a par, really, with last year. I mean, last year was a great year on grass as well, so... Um, you know, it was it was yeah, last year was a good year as well. Um, so like, look, so far this year it's kind of on a par with it, right? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah. So it's positive news. So yes, yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. No, look, thanks for your time on that. No matter. Right, thanks, thank Bertie. you. Okay. So we'll now turn to Matthew. Matthew Beeston is our livestock uh, manager in the UK. So Matthew, I suppose for our viewers, um, both in Ireland and the UK, I suppose, could you just give us a bit of market updates on prices, maybe starting with calves. Yep, so with calves, spring calves are marketing around the 450 to 500 region. Autumn calves, which is just coming batches available now of AI side autumn calves, they're the 200 to 250 pound region. Um, then if you move to autumn bull and heifers, they're trading 750 to 800 pounds. Um, then obviously we've got a good variety of springing calf heifers available. They're the £900 to £1,100. That's a, both AI sired and stop ball sired in calf to AI and in calf to stop balls. Uh, spring carving cows are trading at the £1,000 to £1,200. With summer carving cows carved June, July, August, the £1,400 to £1,500 region for the Holstein region and for the Jersey Cross region. And then autumn calf cows are trading at 1500 1600 pounds. Okay. okay, very good. So just in general, Matthew, what, what is market sentiment like? Or, you know, I suppose the drought has had a big issue in the UK in recent weeks. Um, it, there's a lot of positivity, especially towards the spring calving system now and cows that have got the ability to be able to graze. Um, the rain we've had this last few days is most welcome. I think, you know, in general, the feeling is the interest has increased over the last few days since it's rained. Okay, and maybe to finish on milk price, Matthew, what is the range or who's paying what over there? Uh, milk price is still in the range of 47 pence to 55 pence. Um, seasonality has started over here, so as a bonus for autumn and winter milk production. Um, all of us will top in the league over here by quite a way with uh, the liquid the liquid buyers being at the bottom end of the price league. Very good. And look, thanks for your time there, Matthew. So we have Matthew's number here up on the screen. So for anyone who wants to contact him, there's his uh, mobile number. So thanks again, Matthew. Yep, thank you. So Pat, um, I suppose people often ask me, who's buying and selling in the current market? Uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, so I suppose from a buyer's point of view, what, what we're seeing is firstly, people looking to improve genetics, you know, buying 20, 30 animals and maybe have bred beef more um, in the past few years and looking to replace with, with better stock um, coming from better herds um, to improve, I suppose, their own, their own performance on farm. There still is new entrance. The myth is that there is no new entrance. There still is new entrance out there. What we're seeing maybe, Bertie, is that the scale isn't, isn't as large. So maybe guys who were in dairy maybe 10, 15 years ago, doing a small upgrade on the parlor, maybe a small few upgrades around the yard, not massive building work going on, but um, going back into dairying again. So um, from a seller's point of view, as, as John said, on the scanning, and hearing it from other scanners as well on the road there, um, fertility's improved massively again this year. So um, farmers, I suppose, have excess stock then to, to sell off. 
We've also seen a resurgence of the UK buyer, which may, they're more active in the market than they were previously. Yeah, they have been maybe over the last two or three years, but they are definitely more active this year again. Um, put that down again, they have very high milk price over in the UK, it's similar to here. And um, I suppose one thing looked at isn't mentioned a lot, but TB is a big thing here. So we have obviously the sorts that, that every dairy farm in Ireland gets um, to show their TB history. So if, for example, if you're in a TB4 area in the UK, you'd like to buy, I suppose, cleaner animals um, that have a better, better TB history, maybe. Um, so that, that is one thing. And obviously, we're just slightly further maybe down the tracks on the whole grass bait system, as opposed to the UK, so to get the genetics that are, have been bred for a couple of generations now. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, Bertie, from the other sides of the business, I suppose, in the mapping and farmyard design, where, where are the inquiries coming from and what are you seeing there? Um, I suppose maybe earlier in the year, Pat, we saw a bit of hesitation in the market, which um, people were, you know, inflation was kicking in. There was a lot of climate change pressure or whatever in talk. But probably since April, May, things seem to settle down, inquiries lifted. And uh, I suppose on the farmyard design side, it's very much underpasses are a big uh, demand in terms of doing design for that. Um, Slurry storage obviously is a big buzzword where, where I suppose people need to plan for extra storage. Uh, calf housing, I suppose it's an area where people have maybe had calves in areas, old silage bits, whatever. Now they're looking for bespoke calf, calf rearing facilities to reduce labor and improve calf welfare. Um, and you also, I guess, have uh, parlors as well, milking parlors where a, a, maybe a parlor was milking 80 cows is now milking 160. And a lot of hard yards have been done in that parlor and people are saying, look, I need to look after both the, the people side of things and, and I suppose the cow as well. So there are areas on the farmyard design side and on the mapping again, it's very much again, grazing infrastructure. There's an excellent return for farmers if they invest in their grazing infrastructure. And we see people um, looking to maybe re redesign paddocks, put in new roadways, access water, and that's busy across Ireland and the UK, thankfully for us. So look, the milk price is high. Yes, costs are high as well, but I suppose there is confidence out there and we're seeing that. So proven efficiencies, I suppose, is what everybody is at at the moment. It is, and as a lot of it is down to labour. I suppose labour is yeah. tight everywhere. It's probably not going to get much easier. So it's trying to have the best facilities possible uh, within reason to, to make the, that job easier and, and, and attractive as well for people to come in and do the work where we're needed. Again, look, thanks to our viewers. It's something we're going to try and do on a frequent basis is to give an update to people um, on where the business is at. And I suppose it's just a bit of um, market intelligence, really, in terms of what we're seeing uh, from, from our customers and what's happening both in Ireland and the UK. Okay, so thanks for your time.